So we are going to sketch a graph of, uh, of this equation, this right here, y equals x over x plus 1. And a um, couple of things that we're going to do is, first thing that we are going to do is try and find asymptotes. So um, to find those asymptotes, my first question is, um, when am I dividing by 0? Because I know I can't divide by 0. So that's my first thing to check. And so if I look at just this denominator right here, x plus 1, um, that, ha that equals 0 when x is equal to negative 1. So I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So let me go ahead and sketch out a uh, nice, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'll just uh, get make your way. I'll just freehand it. You'll probably accept it if it's a little wobbly. Um, so I know that I have that one asymptote at x equals negative 1. So that would be right here. Doot, 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 um, x equals negative 1. So that's a gap in my graph. Um, I can't plug in negative 1 for x because it would make me divide by 0. So therefore, I can't have a y value along there. So now, next, let me get my next asymptote. My next asymptote would be my, my horizontal one. And that would be, as x gets really big, as x tends to infinity, what does y start to tend to? So let's take a look at that function, x over x plus 1. So notice that as x gets really large, the plus 1 has less and less of an effect on it. And it essentially gets closer to x divided by x, um, which is 1. Um, in other words, like, if you think of this x over x as just a really big number over a really big number, you have big divided by the same big. Well, close to the same big because it's plus 1, but it's, it gets closer and closer to 1. So as x approaches infinity, this, this function approaches 1, a height of 1, an output of 1. So that gives me this nice horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And now taking, taking a look at this graph, um, I can tell it's going to have, probably going to have a y-intercept, probably going to have an x-intercept as well. So let me see if I can find those. So my x-intercept, x1, y is 0. And my y-intercept, that's when x is 0. <clears throat> so um, let me do this one first, my y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. The x value is 0 because it has no left or right motion. It's just along that axis. So let me let x be 0. So y equals 0 over 0 plus 1, which is 0 divided by 1, which is 0. So when x is 0, y is 0. So I know it goes through this point. 0, 0? Yes, sir. And uh, I might know right away that that's both my x-intercept and my y-intercept because it's one... It crosses both of them there. If I don't see it, I could go back and let, let y be 0 and solve this x over x plus 1. Uh, multiply both sides by x plus 1 to get it out of the denominator. And notice you end up with 0 equals x. So when y equals 0, x equals 0. When x 0 equals 0, y equals 0. So I know I have this. So I can sketch part of my line here. And um, I could like plug in some points over here just so I have a sense of where it comes. I'll, let's try to plug in negative 2 for x and see what happens. I'll do it over here so it's easier to see. So x equals negative 2. If I plug that in, y would equal negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus 1, which would be uh, negative 2 over, ugh, go away, over negative 1, which is positive 2. So when x is negative 2, y is positive 2. So I know it goes to that point, negative 2, positive 2. And then from there I can just boop, sketch the rest of what it would look like. And there, there it is.